Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. It's good to see all of you this Lord's Day as we gather in God's house. I have, I'm Joseph James and surrounded by great volunteers and staff as we worship the Lord together and, and uh, seek to, for His peace in our lives. Uh, I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. Please sign the pew registration pad and sign it down. It's on the inside of the pew so that uh, and pass it down. If there's any updates to any contact information or uh, anything like messages you'd like to give there of, of uh, contact information, it would be great to, to share. I uh, also want to remind you that next Sunday morning we have a choral emphasis for our 11 o'clock service. Uh, some of our choir singing comes back uh, next week at the 11 o'clock service, goes back for uh, since the beginning of the structure building of this, uh, not only this building, but of uh, uh, Trinity Church. So we hope that you will be here next uh, Sunday morning. That's at the 11 o'clock service. On the 29th, uh, for our fifth Sunday of the month, we are having a uh, special time in our uh, 845 service. Uh, Max back here is going to be sick sharing. Max Jackson is going to be sharing his testimony, uh, a little bit about uh, his life and uh, uh, where he sees his uh, service to God in his life these days. So that's on the 29th. Uh, at the 11 o'clock service, uh, our missionary to Hon from Honduras is going to be here. We're starting a new uh, missionary relationship uh, to Guatemala and uh, hopefully we'll be going to Guatemala as part of a medical mission next year but Luke Ree, Dr. Luke Ree, a member of our annual conference will be here uh, to uh, tell us all about that on the 29th. Our men's club supper is tomorrow night. You may see this in the bulletin. The uh, chaplain for the sheriff's office will be here. Uh, you see, you may not be able to see it today, but they're right over on the other side of the rail there on, uh, where the cups go usually. Uh, we have uh, little note cards with the staff of the Trinity Day School. Uh, to this, to, at the 11 o'clock service, we are uh, celebrating 30 years, 30 years of ministry at the Trinity Day School. And like we've done in the past couple of years at the 845 service, uh, we basically pray, we are going to be praying for the staff. You will see cards up here, uh, and they are members of the staff. So what we invite you to do is to take one of those cards, put it on your, put a magnet on your refrigerator, or put it in your devotional area, and we invite you to pray for that staff member every day. Uh, also, uh, offer... Every once in a while, notes and letters, cards of affirmation, just to let them know that you're thinking about them. Uh, we have enough for the staff on, on the, uh, towards the middle here. The further out you go, you will find students, uh, but we invite you to do the same thing for them in terms of prayer for the coming year. We are glad that you're all here this Lord's Day, and we invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, we are thankful this day for the many ways you come into our lives and beautiful sunrises as well as the laughter of children and of one another. We pray now, O oh Lord, for your blessings upon us as we seek to live, as we seek to worship in this time and in this space. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. This morning, as we continue a study of our origin stories, we'll be having two readings from the book of Genesis. The first one is chapter 18, the second is chapter 21, and we'll be reading the first 15 verses of chapter 18. Uh, our story has progressed, and now we're hearing of the story of Abraham and Sarah. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he, when he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after you, have pa you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. And then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. The one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, Have I grown old and my husband is old? Shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At this that time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. And then in chapter 21, the Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the time in which God had spoken to him, Abraham gave the, name, gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah had bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight years old, as God commanded him. Abraham was 100 years old when he had a son whose name was Isaac. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter to me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Whoever, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the Holy Word of God.
Pray with me. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. Oh Lord, we come into this place burdened, but by your Spirit, may we dance. May we laugh. May we love. May we be what you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Since last week, scripture lesson from Genesis 2, a lot has happened. You remember in Genesis 2, Adam and Eve were created, received the breath of life. Well, a lot has happened since last week. As we move through Genesis, we see that Adam and Eve share in the bite of the forbidden fruit and they're cast out of the garden in Genesis chapter 3. We see how their children, Cain and Abel, fight and there's a murder. We see Noah and the flood. We see the, the seriousness of the people of being technologically superior and trying to build a tower of Babel. It's serious stuff until about chapter 12 and it still remains ser serious. As Abraham, a man of better than 70, and his wife Sarah, 60 or thereabouts, make a covenant with God. God makes a covenant with them. God tells them of the land that they would possess, their, their descendants would possess, and that their, their descendants would be more numerous than the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashore. Pretty big promise for senior citizens about descendants. And the decades roll past for Abraham and Sarah, and they travel about trying to find their way, trying to claim what would be theirs. Lot comes, and they deal with Sodom and Gomorrah. Decades of some very, very serious stuff as their hair grows more gray. In chapter 17, it rolls around that God reminds Abraham of this covenant. And then he says to Abraham, Sarah's going to bear a child. And Abraham laughs. Abraham laughs. He laughs so hard he falls on the ground. Now, we hear about Sarah laughing all the time, but the thing we need to remember is Abraham was laughing too. This seems to be the first instance of laughter in the Bible. It's not the last, but it's certainly the first. And then in chapter 18, you, we read this morning how the three strangers come and one of them says to Abraham, I'll come back in, the, in due season and Sarah will have a son. And Sarah laughs too. Now I suspect for Abraham and Sarah, their laughter is of fear, but also just laughing at the incredible nature of what they're hearing. A woman having a child at 90 years old. A man fathering a child at 100. 
Certainly, certainly, we could understand their laughter. Sometimes we laugh to keep from crying. Crying because the decades had passed and still there was no child. We laugh to keep from crying. Sometimes laughter balms our wounds. But the story goes on. And in chapter 21, Sarah bears a child. And she says, God has brought me laughter. You know, names mean things in the Bible. You look in any baby name book, there's probably, you look at your name in the baby book, it, it, it means something. Joseph means he shall add. I probably should have been an accountant, I don't know. Isaac. Isaac means he laughs. Now, does that mean that Abraham laughs? Or does it mean that God laughs? In the Old Testament, the way we identify God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And so we put laughter in how we come to know God. God becomes identified with laughter because God does things that are laughably crazy, that are so beyond the pale of what we think is normal, that we think is possible, that laughter is the only plausible result. We laugh at the improbability of a 90-year-old woman having a child. We laugh when we see Easter Sunday morning dawning and the jeers of Good Friday becomes the laughter of the resurrection. We laugh when we're happy. And we laugh because it can be a balm for our wounds. Rarely is there a funeral that I plan that when I meet with the family, there are tears. But so often in the stories, there's memories of laughter, of the good things of the past, Laughter can be a balm for our wounds. Laughter is the sign of joy and redemption, the unexpected, improbable turn towards wholeness. Sarah says, God brought me laughter. Last week we talked about laughter being our relationship being the last thing of creation. But there are times I wonder if laughter is not an element of creation that is part of our origin story that we don't claim nearly enough. Our lives tend to be fairly serious endeavors. We tend to be worried and concerned and knee-deep in the problems of the world. There's enough for us to ponder and worry and brood about, just as it was for Abraham and Sarah and the decades before the guests came to Mamre, the Oaks of Mamre. And sadly, 
Sometimes we make faith the same way. Sometimes we make faith so serious that we forget the laughter. In my office, there is a drawing. I have it up on my wall. I've had it for about 20 years, and it's, a pic it's not a picture. It's a drawing of Jesus with his head thrown back and his hand to his chest, and he is laughing. We have in the scriptures that Jesus wept, but I can't see how Jesus could be with 12 guys like he was and not laugh. Laughter, laughter is part of what it means to be faithful. Laughter is part of what it means to be faithful. Charlie Chaplin said, a day without laughter is a day wasted. George R. R. Martin said, laughter is poison to fear. There's another saying that says, I have not seen anyone dying of laughter, but I know of millions who are dying because they're not laughing. Laughter keeps us at times from crying. Laughter is a sign of joy and redemption and love. As Sarah says, God brings laughter to our lives. How has God brought you laughter? How has God brought you laughter lately? When's the last time you had a good belly laugh? Where is there laughter in your life? My friends, laugh, love, because they are gifts from Almighty God. May we be blessed with laughter all of our lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. As a response to the word of God proclaimed among us, let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thirty years. Thirty years. the ministry of Trinity Day School. On average, on average, a hundred students a year. And there have been some repeats, certainly, of children that have gone through the program from beginning to end. But think about that for a moment, of how many students, how many hundreds of students have come through the doors to Trinity Day School. Think about the dozens of teachers. Some of those that have come through these doors to this day school may have been your own children or grandchildren. Imagine where all of those people are today and the foundation that was laid through the Trinity Day School. Today we are thankful. Thankful for what the Trinity Day School offers. You know, if you want to know about Trinity Day School and our best known feature, it is not our sanctuary. It is not our steeple. It is our day school. When Air Force personnel on the other side of the world find out that they are going to be stationed at Shaw and they have children, the best place known in the Air Force in Sumter for child development centers is Trinity. Most, most of the students that are at the Trinity Day School are the dependents of Air Force personnel. And so we pray this day for the ministry of Trinity Day School and especially for the teachers. That's what we're going to be focusing on in our prayer time for the next year for our service as part of the 845 service. In just a moment, Beth is going to play Jesus Loves Me, and I invite you to come at that time and come and pick one of these note cards off the rail. And as I said in the announcement time, I invite you to take that card home, put it in your devotional area, put it on your refrigerator, and I invite you to pray for that staff member every day. And that throughout the, sea, the year, at the, around the holidays, but also just because it's a Thursday in November, write them a note, send them a card, address it here to the office, and we'll get it where it needs to go. We are thankful for Trinity Day School and for their ministry and for our opportunity that we have to pray. And so at this time, I'm going to invite Beth to play Jesus Loves Me, and I'm going to invite our church members and friends to come at this time and take a card from the rail. As I said earlier, the ones towards the very end are students, but right in here are uh, teachers and staff, so we invite you to come at this time.
Come on up. Yes. We've got uh, three more. So after the service, if you did not get one or if you would like another one, we have three more over on this side and one more over on this side. So we have four left. As we gather today for our prayers, there is one person in our normally at our 845 service. You may remember him, Harry Jolly. He sits about midways back. Uh, Harry and Edith, they just joined the church not too long ago. I have to tell you this morning that Harry is at Richland Hospital. He's having kidney failure. We're not sure why. They're doing dialysis. They're trying to uh, stoke his system up with some antibodies. But I invite you to pr please pray for Harry and Edith. Uh, they are members of the Fahola class, so I know that they are well taken care of in prayers and outreach. I was there this week, and they showed me the flowers that the Fahola class sent. So please keep Harry and Edith jolly in your prayers. We also want to pray for uh, Sarah Kirvin, Julie's and, uh, sister and Larry Kirvin's sister who has uh, cracked a pelvic bone. And we want to continue to remember her. She's back uh, out of the hospital and they're trying to keep her out of pain as best they can. Carolyn Ramsey, uh, Tilly's sister, fell last week and hit her head. Um, and they were worried about uh, bleed as well, but she is home or she is back in the nursing home as well. Friends, there's a lot of things going on in our world, and I invite you to spend a few quiet moments with Almighty God, taking your prayer concerns as well as the concerns that we have listed and said this day. Would you spend a few quiet moments with God? Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In your name and in the names of those in covenant with you, we find your qualities and characteristics. We find laughter. Lord, there are times we do not feel like laughing. Even as we have gone through the week of September 11th and remember the dark day of 18 years ago. Sometimes we do not feel like laughing, oh God, when we consider the diagnoses and problems of the world, the stresses in Saudi Arabia and other places, the chaos in the Bahamas. But Lord, we pray that in all of these impossible situations, you may find us faithful. That in all of these impossible, improbable situations, you may show resurrection and life and miracle and hope. Guide us out of the shadow of the valley, O Lord. the shadow of death. 
Guide us from the valley into the mountaintop. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings for our selfishness and for our fear, for our misplaced priorities, and help us always to be yours. These things we ask in your name, O Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now will our ushers please come forward for the dedication of our tithes and offerings. Thank you, O Lord, for these gifts. May they be used to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and make your lives a dedicated part of your faith in Jesus Christ. Go into the world in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.